Good morning everyone. So, what are we doing today? It, it's been raining, so last night I ran, ran all the show sheep in. And we're gonna shear the ones that are gonna go to the show next week. Just get some looking nice and clean for the show and, and depending on what class they're in, they have to be shorn before a certain date or after a certain date. So, we'll shear, well these two ewes here will shear. Then five or six rams out the back there. We'll see how we get on with them. I think this stand's seen a few sheep, Sean, though. Won't be long and I'll be falling through the floor. say show sheep and why do we have them another aspect of our farm is our stud stock so we have polled orset sheep and every year we have a ram sale where we sell around 100 rams to to buyers that are looking to um, put a polled orset ram over mainly a first cross ewe which is generally borderless across merino and what we're doing by um, going to shows is we're showing people our, our stock and type of sheep that we've got so that they can then make a decision um, based on what they want, uh, whether they want to come to our sale and buy some of our blood or not. So we go to the show, we get put up against other, other stud and then there's one judge and they judge in their eyes what the best sheep in the classes. Judges can vary a little bit on what they want, but there is there is a set of standard breeding specifications that generally you follow on what determines what a what a good good sheep is, <clears throat> what a good pole horse you is. It's different for every breed obviously. Because pole horse is a meat sheep. So their prime purpose is is for meat. There's there's no really not really a lot of value in their wool, or hardly any really and therefore their breed specifications are going to be different to a merino which is it used to be 100 percent judged on their wool but i think these, these days it's 90 percent wool and 10 percent body structure so another thing we do before the show is tie them up to get them used to being on on the halters so that it's not a bronc ride every time you take them out into the ring so I'm just going to tie these two ewes up while we shear a couple of other rams and then we'll do the same with the rams. Scratch on the ear just gets some calming down a little bit.
So I'm just gonna see what Dad thinks about this fella. Whether we, he's got a pretty good um, coat of wool on him. So I'm just wondering whether I do leave him and trim him, trim him up a little bit. Cause yeah, at the shows there's there's woolly classes and there's shorn bear shorn classes. A pair as well, which I think will be those two. And then this fella will just go in a class on his own. I think he's the best sheep. He's my favourite, I think. No, sorry, this guy. See, as soon as you grab them, they... Because they've been on the halter a few times, they know they can't do anything. So he's just standing there. So now we've got them tied up. Um, just like to go along and touch them, be a bit rougher with them, get them used to being handled. Because what what the judge will do, he'll check their teeth, feel their ears, come through their shoulders, feel their loin down the back and then they'll feel their balls so it's good practice just to get them used to being touched get them desensitized and another thing we've got to do is try and get them used to standing correctly so nice and square so like that so he's standing nice and square it's a bit hard we will you will hold their their head up a bit higher it's a bit hard when they're um, tied to the rail but you want their head presented really well nice and tall like that so there's plenty of length there there's good width when you look at them from up here you almost want to see a triangle so you want their shoulders to come to a point good hind quarters so this stuff on this on their backs doesn't look real good now but it's just I think because you use you notice the ewes don't have anything on their back any dirt or anything I think it's because there's a fallen down tree in their paddock and they love they sit under that most of the day and so I think it's the branch rubbing on their back and causing dirt and, and sap to um, go onto their backs so with a bit of rain on it this week that it'll clean up and it'll be gone before the show. Alrighty so I just left them for 15 minutes just uh, just to get them relaxed and get them used to it so we'll just let them off now and it's just started raining but we can send them back to their paddocks and they will I'll give them a bucket of feed and and um, they can go on with their day, whatever they, whatever they get up to. So I just like to take the holder off them at the last minute, keep hold of them, and then when they're relaxed, just let them go slowly, so that their last experience of the holder on is not not a bad one. They're not trying to get away and pull away and then take off.
they get two lots of feed. They get a bucket in the morning and a bucket at night, and it's a mix of um, both DDG pellets and uh, barley. So a lot of people use lick feeders with their sh stud sheep. We've done that once before, or a couple of times before. I don't know. I do like giving a bucket in the morning at night just so that then you know that if they're if one's not eating or you know you know exactly how much they're eating every day. If it's all gone in the afternoon or in the morning, you know that they're they're um they're getting enough, and you can you can either up the rate or as opposed to on the lick feeder, you, there might be five or six that are pigging themselves, and then one or two that aren't eating at all. It just at least this way, you, you know that they're all eating or if one's not you have to look at them twice a day so you can see if one's foot sore or sick or yeah I just don't know because then the advantage of the lick feeder is they can they can eat as much as they want when they want If you got any questions or anything, just put it in the comments and I'll I'll answer them. Whether it's on, you know, the purpose of the polled horses as a breed or just anything really. If you if you want to know anything, just just put it down there and I'll answer them. Um, hope you enjoy it. Maybe you learn something. Bit of an insight into um, the stud side of our farm. Uh, so we'll go to a couple of shows this year, hopefully. We haven't been in a couple of years. One, because of COVID, and two, because I've been busy with a few other things, so. Um, but I'm keen to, now that I'm back from uni, I'm keen to go back to a few more shows. Bit of a wet day today. Finally, it's it's good after last week. Had a big big week of bailing loose and all over, the, all around the area last week, so this rain's very welcome. Dad's just over there doing a bit of welding, I think. Bit of a shed day, so. No worries, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you in the next one. See ya, bye.